Okay, in this lesson we are continuing on with functions. I'm going to look at function notation. So in the last lesson we uh, let's straighten this out. Last lesson we saw that we could represent functions by ordered pairs. Perhaps we could organize those ordered pairs in a table of values. We could have a graph or an equation. Um, we can also represent functions using something called function notation. So function notation uh, looks like f of x, so this reads as f of x. We can use any letter. We could say g of x, we could say h of x, and so on. So the label is the symbol before the bracket, so this is called the label, and the argument is what's in the bracket. Um, so it's just a different way to represent a function instead of using x and y. So I could say y equals 5x plus 1. So this is the pattern of the equation. So this is saying y depends on this pattern. So y is calculated by multiplying the x variable by 5 and adding 1. I could also say f of x equals 5x plus 1. So that means that find the value of the function when x equals 5 times x plus 1. So once we've defined a function using function notation, we can pretty much substitute anything into the argument um, and then evaluate it. And we can do that um, using numbers, variables, we can find those um, values on a graph, and we'll look at a few of those examples. Um, in the next couple of pages. So for example, if f of x equals 4x squared plus 5, calculate f of negative 1. So that means that the function is 4x squared plus 5 and it wants you to find the value of the function when x equals negative 1. So this is the argument. So 4x squared plus 5 means that we want to evaluate this when x has a value of negative 1. So if we wanted to evaluate this, remember that follow bed mass. Um, so you'll notice that when I replaced x with negative 1, I made sure that I put it in brackets, and then that bracket is going to get squared. So negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 4 plus 5 is 9. f of 1 half, same thing. I'm going to replace the x with 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half in the bracket. So 1 half squared is 1 quarter. 4 times a quarter is 1, plus 5 is 6. We could substitute in a uh, binomial. So it doesn't have to be a single number, it could be some sort of expression. So we want to substitute in 2a plus 1. Just be careful expanding. If you can't remember, uh, 2a plus 1 squared means multiply 2a plus 1 times 2a plus 1. So sometimes it's a good idea to write it out twice so that you don't forget to multiply all terms. So it's 2a times 2a, 4a squared, 2a times 1, 1 times 2a, and 1 times 1. So sometimes we forget those middle terms when we square. Don't forget, it's 2a plus 1 times 2a plus 1. Then I would multiply the 2a plus 1 squared by 4. So I always leave that coefficient to the end, so I'll expand my brackets first. Now I'll multiply by 4. And then finally, we'll just collect like terms. Okay, so a couple things to reminders of expanding binomials. Um, in this example, we have two functions. So we have f of x is 3x plus 2 and g of x is 5x plus 7. It wants us to determine f of 2 minus g of 3. So f of 2 well, this function is f of x, so f of 2 would be 3x plus 2 
where we're substituting in a value of 2. So this is f of 2. Then it wants me to subtract g of 3. So g is 5x plus 7. And it wants me to substitute in a value of 3 in this function. So notice I put both functions in brackets, especially because I'm subtracting. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 7 is 22. And then 8, 8 minus 22 is negative 14. In example B, it wants us to do g of 2x plus 1 minus f of 5. <clears throat> so g of x is 5 x plus 7 and it wants me to replace x with 2x plus 1. Then we want to subtract f of 5. f of x is 3x plus 2 and it wants me to replace the x with a 5. So just read the question carefully. Make sure you're substituting the proper value into the proper function. It's not always f of minus g of x. It could be g of x minus f of x. Okay, so I'm going to clean up this bracket here. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 ones are 5. This bracket equals 15 plus 2 is 17. So now I can remove brackets. 5 and 7 is 12 minus 17. And that's negative 5. So the final result is 10x minus 5. Make sure that you simplify all expressions. Okay, in example 3, it wants us to find f of a plus 1. That's not what I wanted. So that equals x squared plus 7, and we're replacing x with a plus 1. So I'm going to expand that. A plus a times a, a times 1, 1 times a, 1 times 1. And then final simplified expression is a squared plus 2a plus 8. Um, in example 2, it wants us to do g of 2. So g is negative 3x plus 1, replacing x with a 2, minus f of negative 3. So x squared plus 7, replacing x with a negative 3. So in this bracket, we have negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, minus. In this bracket, we have negative 3 squared is positive 9, plus 7 is 16. And negative 5 minus 16 is negative 21. Sometimes we might have um, a function represented by equation, and maybe the other one is represented by a graph. Um, so if I want to find g of negative 1, so this graph is g of x. So g of negative 1 means find the value of the function when x is negative 1. Or find y when x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go along my x-axis to negative 1, and the value of y is 0. Oops, it's g. So g of negative 1 has a value of 0. So I can find that directly from the graph. I don't need to know the equation. Um, I just find that value on the graph. So g of 0, let's do this in a different color. So it wants you to find the value of the graph at 0. So here's 0. So it's right here. So it looks like it is uh, 1.2. Those increments are 0.2. So g of 0 minus f of 4. Well, g of 0 equals 1.2. f of 4 would be negative 5 replace x with a 4 plus 3. So that's negative 20 plus 3 is negative 17. Two negatives make a positive, so adding 1.2 is 18.2.
and then c is worded a little differently. It says find the value of x if f of x equals 0. So c is asking you to find x when the function is 0 or when y is 0. So if I look at the equation, where is y 0? y is 0. Let's erase this here. y has a value of 0 here, 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 and here. So there are actually four answers when y is 0. So x equals, I'm going to say, negative 2.5. This is just approximate. Uh, negative 1 and 1 and 2 when f of x is 0. So just read the question carefully. Is it asking for y or is it asking for x?